All right, thank you. For the record, again, uh, we have been viewing a video, uh, Defendant's Exhibit I in evidence, uh, and that is why the tape has been silent for the last number of minutes. Uh, officer, you can resume the stand. Um, were you in the process of asking more questions? No, or, or did no you more questions. For this officer? Uh, I, th I think we had commenced cross. Is that right? I was about to. I will begin now. Um, actually, let's let's start with uh, the videotape. Um, officer Atkins um, indicated that you recognized um, Defense Exhibit I as a video recording of the incident. Is that correct? Yes, or a portion of the incident. Yes. Okay. And what what portion um, is not represented in that video, if you know? Well, it, obviously, uh, there's no video of the interior of the vehicle and the incident that was happening within that. Um, obviously, it lacks the audio of that portion, but also uh, the portion once uh, Mr. Wynn is walked away from um, the view of the camera and the approximate area of his vehicle in this particular video. And then, of course, it, uh, the highway patrol vehicles do not pull up until um, a little bit later into our contact with at that particular uh, location. Okay. And um, <clears throat> how long is this video? Are you aware of how many minutes it, it plays, the length of the video? Recording? No, I'm not. From just from sitting here watching, I would estimate maybe about five and a half, give or take a little bit. Okay. And it's, um, it, it catches the action after you've approached the vehicle, correct? That's correct. Okay. And Deputy Binley had... Um, made contact with the defendant at the vehicle prior to your approach, correct? That's correct. Okay. And do you have any idea how long Deputy Binley had been in contact with the defendant before your approach? No, I do not. Right. Now, with regard to um, the action depicted in the video, uh, could you describe uh, the... Um, demeanors of the officers outside of the vehicle from what you could see on the video? Yes, um, it, as far as verbally or? No, just as far as physically, since we have no audio, I'm just asking about your, the physical demeanor of, let's start with yourself and Deputy Binley. Oh, yeah. I, I would describe us as overall uh, very calm at that point um, at uh, four, or the start portion of the video up until the, uh, the point when um, the doors actually become open, of course, the uh, firearms recognize, and then, of course, demeanors change. Okay. And how did the demeanors change at that point? Well, I, at first, when uh, the driver's side door came open, I saw the uh, what I recognized as a, or believed to be a Glock um, magazine. Um, I'd describe it kind of towards the left uh, rear part of the side area of Mr. And almost simultaneously, and I'm not sure who it was, but one of the uh, officers or deputies on the other side uh, yelled gun. And, you know, of course, at that point, then uh, that's when I took uh, control. I realized there were numerous other officers, citizens and stuff um, around in there, and also officers that were kind of around. So I want to do everything possible to prevent a, a shooting, either by Mr. or by us. So that's at the point when I took control of Mr. left arm, um, and then I... I would assume it was Deputy Binley, I'm not positive, but that took control of his right arm and he was placed in the handcuffs. Okay. And did you see on the video where the, um, the weapon was um, an, an, a, an officer had control of the weapon and moved it to the rear of the truck? I, I saw the, uh, the officer coming toward the rear of the truck and it did appear that he had the weapon okay. in his hand at that time. And officer, do you, do you know what a stress position is? Not specifically. I know what stress is, but uh, those two together, that's why I had to ask for clarification. So is there a term stress position uh, that you're If aware there of? is, I have never specifically heard of it. Okay. 
And as, as far as how um, the defendant was seated while handcuffed in the command center, um, was that unusual? Unusual in what way? As far as how he was seated in the chair while handcuffed. Well, it's, uh, of course, unusual and, and typical because typically people are not handcuffed at all. But for the way that we do um, have handcuffed people because we do take them into our command center, that is a common way that we place them. It's also the common way that the deputies uh, place people in chairs at the uh, Washington County Detention Facility for searching. And if you'd like, I would, I'd be happy to demonstrate, uh, you know, Certainly. sort of how it was. Um, of course, the uh, chairs in, in the command posts are low back uh, chairs. So they don't have a real high back on them, but basically, it, and it's for comfort purposes. But your handcuffs or your hands are brought to the back of a chair like this, because if you're sitting on them like this, of course you're going to be pushing back. It's going to be much more uncomfortable. Okay. And also, just for record, the record. Um, yes. If you instead of saying this, if you could describe, you're doing a good job, but describe more specifically what you mean by this as far as comfort. Oh yes, I'm I'm sitting in a, a chair here with a much higher back and of course a much thicker back than uh, the chair that we have in our command center. Um, but basically uh, when your hands come and they're handcuffed to the back of you, I, I presently have my hands around the back side of the chair and I'm sitting back in the chair. And uh, there, there's two purposes. Number one um, is it's, it provides more comfort than doing it where your hands are directly behind your back and you're sitting in the chair because then you're having to lean back on your hands um, with this way. But this way you, you can still lay back. If you're sitting still, it's, it's actually not an uncomfortable position. Um, in, in our training when I worked up at the sheriff's office and stuff, we did uh, different scenarios and stuff like that. So I've actually sat in that position before. If you're moving around, it's not. But it also helps to prevent somebody from quickly emerging from a chair because um, typically if you're handcuffed, and you're sitting in a chair, it's probably because you're in custody and, you know, we want to prevent that. Okay, thank you. And Officer Adkins, um, you've also testified that you have training and experience with regard to um, DUI investigations, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay. And you were trained to uh, note the initial signs of impairment or alcohol or drug use, correct? That's correct. Okay. And isn't it correct that you look for red watery eyes, um, odor of alcohol, slurred speech, um, things along those lines, correct? That's correct. Okay. And in this case, you noticed uh, red watery eyes, smoter, uh, the odor of alcohol, correct? Of an uh, alcoholic beverage. And like I said, I described it more... And that's how I described it in my report, too, as a sweet smell. Okay. And did you notice anything else? As far uh, as? As far uh, as consistent with, um, or what you'd be looking for if you're looking for um, alcohol impairment? No, that was uh, mostly um, what I, I did. I've worked uh, a numerous uh, sobriety checkpoints. I'd estimate upwards of maybe 10 to 15 uh, in the time that I've been with the Sparks Police Department. And um, we, we do have, from time to time, people that come through the checkpoints that are uncooperative. This was an extreme. I've never had a situation like this. But um, it, typically, the people that are not impaired, you know, are just occasionally people voice their uh, frustration with the checkpoint, but they just go on about their business. Um, but I have in the past had people who are actually impaired, you know, that are not completely cooperative, um, that don't want to, because obviously you know, uh, the presumption is they're probably trying to mask or hide uh, whatever it is that, um, you know, would be a display of their impairment. So that, of course, uh, was also one of the things that was in my mind that caused me to reasonably believe I was impaired. So Officer Atkins, when you arrived at the driver's side window, uh, in what position was the defendant's driver's side window? As far as rolled up, rolled partially down, all the way down? Um, from what I recall when I uh, first initially um, 
Up there, I believe that it was down, but it was only what I estimate to be about three quarters to maybe an inch. And you indicated that you asked him to roll down his window further? Yes, I, I request that he roll down his window, which I, I don't recall if I used the word all the way, but yes, I, I did give him numerous um, directions to roll his window down. Okay. What do you mean by numerous? Could, could you estimate how many? I would say maybe 15 to 20. And did you make a determination during the course of this that the defendant was obstructing the orders of the police officers? Yes, Yourself and De Deputy Bindley? Yes, I did. And at what point did you make that determination? Well, uh, he was, of course, obstructing us from the points when he was given a lawful orders, you know, from the uh, onset pretty much to roll down the window. It was evident by his responses because at one point he said that he was scared and, and gave numerous different responses that he clearly understood what we were directing him to do, um, but the point at which I determined that he was going to be placed under arrest for the obstructing was the point at which he opened the door and then it was voice that he was reaching for the gun. And then, you know, he provided, as I documented in my report, some, uh, I wouldn't call it strong resistance, but some passive resistance as myself and, like I said, I believe it was Deputy Binley who handcuffed his other arm. Okay, and what do you mean by passive resistance? Well, he wasn't all out fighting with us, but he also was not voluntarily bringing his hand to the small of his back to be handcuffed. And which, you know, of course, with the gun in the, in the situation was of great concern for our safety as well as several other people that were there. Okay. Did he, did he lean or move his arms away at any point, at, at this point? What, what do you mean by lean? Did he lean his body or move his arms as you were trying to handcuff him? Well, no, I don't specifically remember that. All I remember, though, is that obviously I, I had a pretty strong hold on him because it was important that we get him handcuffed and that he is kind of trying to pull away from me, but then whoever else it was on the other side or trying to handcuff him also, they appeared to be having problems getting that arm to the small of his back. Okay. And he was pulling away from you? Yes, he was. I have nothing further. Further questions, Mr. Yes, uh, you mentioned uh, a magazine on my left hip. Uh, is that the point where in, uh, in an audio recording you mentioned, or you or somebody else mentioned, he's got a clip? That was probably me. And at that point, did I have a notebook in my hand? I don't recall. And at that point, when you said he's got a clip, did I sit completely still? No. Actually, what I recall is that you reaching over towards your right side, and obviously, me being on your left side, I couldn't completely see, but it all happened almost simultaneously, and then several officers started yelling, gun, 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 over and over. And obviously, when I saw the, uh, the magazine or the clip, you know, most people don't carry a magazine without a, a gun, so I suspected that you probably had a firearm, but it, it all happened within just seconds. And is it your impression that once you, you, you voiced, he's got a clip, that, that I realized, that you realized that I had a firearm to go with that clip, with that magazine? Objection, Your Honor, calls for speculation. Sustained. On an audio recording that was provided, the uh, vehicle's horn is going off continuously. Is that because I was leaning into the horn? Um, I wouldn't specifically know why the horn was going off. If I recall, uh, at that point when the horn was going off was when we were trying to take you into custody. So it would make sense that probably your body's pushed forward against the horn but I did not actually see your body make contact with the uh, steering wheel, which is where the horn typically uh, is controlled to emit sound. And my body was pushed forward, you said? Oh, well, like I said, I, I didn't specifically see your body make contact with the horn, but also, though, when you were in the seated position, we're trying to bring your hands smaller your back, 
it, it would definitely make sense that obviously your body is going to come forward into that area where the horn uh, button would be in a typical vehicle. Okay, as far as me going forward, how was that because of four people on my back pushing me forward? Uh, I don't recall anybody on your back. Was anybody pushing me forward? I was probably pushing you forward. I can't speak for anybody else, but yes, I was probably pushing you forward. Okay, and is it, you know how a seat belt, do you know how a seatbelt works, how it restrains people? A uh, typical seatbelt, yes. It stops them from moving forward quickly. They can move forward slowly, but. Objection, Your Honor. These aren't questions. It has to be a question, Mr. I am. Sustained. Are you asking a question? Was I wearing the seatbelt when I leaned forward or was pushed forward? I don't recall. And you mentioned that I was not voluntarily bringing my hands to my back. Uh, how is it possible to voluntarily bring hands to the, to the back, behind the back, if somebody else has got hold of your hands? Um, we take, I've taken a lot of people into custody over my career, and a lot of times people just bring their hands, I mean, I can do it right here, bring my hands to the palm of my back. And at that time, did you have control of my left hand or left, hand or left arm? Yes, I did. And at that time, did somebody else have control of my left arm or left hand? Uh, all that I recall is that I had control of your left arm and then somebody else took control of your right arm slash hand. That's all for me. Re recross. No, Your Honor, no questions. All right. Can Officer Atkins be excused? Yes. Yes, Your Honor. Thank you.